I'm Jay. I'm a, a coder at Action Rocket. Um, I only started two weeks ago. Um, before that, I've, uh, I was a head of marketing for an e-commerce brand for 10 years, um, as well as a few other brands, um, UK marketing, global marketing, that kind of thing. So I've come from the marketing side and then changed over to coding. So I've got an outlook on should marketers learn to code um, and hopefully some pointers to help you guys. OK, so as a marketer, um, you kind of need to have a broad understanding of all these things, especially if you're kind of managing it or looking after it. So, I mean, you can see there's SEO, social media, print, uh, writing, photography, PR, and last few, web design, user experience, and email. You might want to use some coding, um, but if you've got no idea, um, then you probably find frustrations every single day at work when the, co the link's not right, and you've got to go find the web developer to try and change just one link in a piece of content. Um, so, should, that, should we add code as well? So I think there's some different factors when you're talking to marketers as to whether they should learn to code. Um, so their job role, if they're a senior manager, maybe they're not fiddling with anything, so they're just strategizing, so maybe they don't need to learn some code. The size of company, um, the first company I worked for, there was two directors um, and me, and I had to do packaging all the products, uh, customer service, phone calls, social media, and delete the website. Um, so if you're doing all those things, maybe you do need to learn some code. Um, if it's a larger company, there's probably someone doing it, or they've got the money to get someone to do it for you. And um, also the time, do you have the time to do it? Like, do you, should the marketers learn to code, and they need to learn it, and then they need to spend time developing things? Or is it just cheaper and easier to outsource it to someone else? Um, and interest is a big thing as well. If they're not interested in it, they're not going to be bothered. Um, so you might want to find someone who's interested to do it. Um, and you want to find someone who's interested in it, the, the clients that you're working with as well, because it'll make your life a lot easier. Uh, yeah, so some pros for marketers, um, if there's some marketers here that aren't email coders. Um, just ease of updating content, like I said, if there's a link. If you know that all you've got to do is go to that blue bit and change it, um, that's going to make your life a lot easier. But you'd be surprised a lot of marketers that don't know any of that, so it's going to take a while for them to find stuff. Um, and same, just simple little bits of HTML and CSS, maybe just to change some things, even on some content management systems like WordPress, uh, Shopify, things like that, that they're working with, having a little, little knowledge will help. And even with emails, if you've sent them a full HTML email, and then all they've got to do is change a the link, they've then got to send it back to you, you've got to deal with it, send it back to them when you've got a lot of other things to be doing. So from a marketer's point of view, um, it could reduce your project timelines if you haven't got to keep going back and forth, back and forth for little changes. Um, you have an idea of the workload as well. If you're talking to someone who's tried to code a website and they've had a load of trouble or they've tried to code an email, um, then obviously they're going to understand when you say, oh, it's going to take me two days to do that, they're not going to imagine that it just takes like 30 seconds. Um, especially if you're doing something quite advanced and they're trying to do it with a, a WYSIWYG editor or something like that. Um, if they understand the bits behind it, then they're going to understand what you're talking about a lot more. Um, and they can give you an informed brief as well. Um, so if they know that you can't do something, they're not going to ask for it, and then you've got to awkwardly say, I'm really sorry, I can't do that. Um, or we can do that, but it's not going to work the way you want it to. If they already know, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Um, so yeah, for work marketers, they're going to work better with you, with coders and developers. Um, for their CPD, they're going to learn something new, um, which might be a bonus for them. And for any older marketers, um, my brother, when he was at school, was learning to program and code, um, and I didn't know anything. So he was learning it, and I was learning it at the same time, and he was only in primary school. Um, so yeah, there was a bit of a jump and a bit of a change. Um, so yeah, if they don't know, they might want to start learning even just a little bit. So some pros for coders. Um, ease of communicating. So believe me when I say as a marketer, going to a, a web developer or an email coder and saying I want something to do it, and they keep coming back and saying they can't do it, and I keep saying, but I've seen it on the internet, why can't you do it? Um, yeah, as a coder, then on the opposite side, I'm thinking, oh, OK, I understand now. Um, so yeah, so having a little bit of someone who knows a little bit probably will help you out. Um, as well as integrating new stuff. So if, they're finding, if you're finding cool stuff and they're finding cool stuff on the internet, then maybe you want to work together um, and they'll have some more ideas. Because if you're feeding off their design of an image, some copy and a CTA every single time, and you're getting bored of doing that, um, then hopefully that will help. Um, and then, yeah, less little fixes like changing links and things. Maybe you don't want them playing with your code, um, but if they can just change a few little things, it might make your life a lot easier. Oh. <laughs> so 
yeah, and also some things are possible, um, but some of the things will cost a lot to do because it's going to take you a lot of time to do it. So yeah, having that backup to say you can do that. No? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so you can share that. So there are some limitations to HTML emails. Um, obviously, you've got the, what Mark's been working on, so the Rebel Mouse stuff, the checkout stuff. Um, if they do want that to happen, they need, they need to know that if they've seen this and it's out there, they need to know either they need to go to Rebel Mail or they need to leave you time to figure it out. So, um, and then on the other side, AMP for Gmail. If they saw the big blog posts, the big live webinars all about AMP for Gmail and email, um, then obviously they need to know that you can't do it right now um, or it's going to take some time. Um, Another thing that I didn't understand, first of all, when I started coding emails is that sometimes it doesn't always look the same in all inboxes, but also it doesn't have to look the same in all inboxes. So yeah, that's the email weekly from Action Rocket. Obviously, it doesn't look the same in every inbox, but then to try and get that across, um, if they know a bit of code and they understand the rendering issues, and even if you just pull up these things um, and say, look, this is how it will look, it will be OK, um, they might understand. Um, so if, yeah, from a marketer's point of view, I didn't get that feedback. I just got, oh, it's going to take us longer to figure it out. Whereas if I'd have known that it might just look a little bit different, I probably would have been all right with it. Um, obviously, some brands, so I worked with a large Canadian brand that are very strict on their brand guidelines. Um, they wouldn't deal with that, and you'd just have to spend more time on it. So yeah, to and fro, I guess. Um, small changes may not be that easy. Um, so yeah, the last minute, can you just swap this around? Can you just move this? Can you just do that? Um, if they understand that it takes a little bit of time, then you're not going to get it at 5 o'clock on a Friday. We need to do this now. Um, so yeah, understanding that's going to help you out a lot as well. Also understand how you develop emails. Um, so you don't have a live idea of what exactly it's going to look like. You need to test it. You need to build it. And you might need to test it again. And then if they're giving you a small change that's going to change the layout, then they need to understand that. Um, so all these things are just things that kind of like for us as a coder and now me as a coder, I know this happens. But as a marketer, I don't understand why it takes you an extra day to change something around that looks like it takes 30 seconds. Um, so if you've got that in the back of your mind when you're doing all the, the, and they're asking for little changes, if as a marketer you know that, then that's going to help you out. Yeah, so design limitations, font size, image quality, positioning. You guys know as well as I know what can and can't be done. Um, but yeah, if you can give them across to people before they then design you an email, rather than them designing something that they look brilliant in Photoshop and they're like, I really want it to look like this, um, and then you're going back to them and having to say, I can't make it look like that, um, then that would be negative on your side because you're saying you can't do it. Um, whereas beforehand, if you say, these are the things we can do and these things we can't do, then hopefully you'll get a design that you can figure out and work with. But if they do understand code and they're a bit interested, you can start sharing all these cool things with them. Um, so personalization, um, countdown timers, uh, Aaron's super mail quest, uh, the videos in email. Um, if they understand that it's not going to look the same in every email, if they understand that there's going to be fallbacks, um, if they understand all the reasons why this stuff could be really cool, um, then it's going to help you. Um, if you find out from them that they've got a majority iOS list, um, then you can start working on even more cool stuff. Um, if they're all Outlook, um, then you can stick with the pictures. So <laughs> what, some takeaways then from what we've got. So this is uh, Evelyn Wolf from HubSpot, a big marketer. So as a marketer, um, you should know that coding should be part of the DNA. Um, if we know how to build some stuff from scratch, then we'll understand it a little bit more. Um, and I think as coders, we can help get that across to some people. So yeah. Some little things. If you take some time to explain the, the reasons behind the code to a client, and if they've got a little understanding, then hopefully you can get your message across a bit better. Uh, share the exciting stuff that you can do rather than what you can't do. So if someone comes to you with something and you can't do it, rather than saying, oh, I can't do it and not having a solution, give them some more exciting stuff that they can do. Um, and then, yeah, they'll probably be a bit more responsive. And yeah, be realistic with timings and what you can achieve rather than just saying, yeah, yeah, we'll get it done, um, or it's going to take us five days, it's going to take us a week. Give them a realistic time and why it's going to take that time, and that will help them out. For any marketers, um, yeah, if you want to learn code, you don't need to be an expert. You can just start with the smallest little things. Um, some CSS, some HTML will just get you past a little bit, and it will help you understand what the, a developer or a coder is saying back to you. Um, if you don't understand something, just ask. And if you're a coder and people are asking you questions, it's a good thing because if you're going to work with them for a long time, you just 
answer the questions, spend some time with them describing things, and it will make your life a lot easier in the future. Um, yeah, and then yeah, learning some little things. So um, a lot of stuff for marketers takes time. Um, one thing that maybe email mark our marketers don't know, um, but maybe they do, is the Facebook open graph tags. Um, having them on the website is going to make your life a lot easier updating Facebook. As a marketer, if someone said to me, if you just tag everything with these, gra these tags that are going to automatically update every time, as soon as you put a link on Facebook, it's going to pop up with the image you want, the description you want, and the link you want every single time, rather than having to import your link, import the text, do the description every single time. And um, that probably would have saved me four or five hours a week. Uh, so yeah, having a little knowledge of all these things will probably help. And if as an email developer, you can pass on any little tricks, um, any design tricks as well, that'll help them out. Uh, some useful links. So, I mean, you guys probably know this, but as a marketer, if you can share these to people, um, Action Rocket, Code Academy, YouTube is probably the biggest way I learn. Um, email on Acid and Litmus, um, passing around those things. If you find an interesting blog article that is relevant to them, try sharing it with them. They probably will read it if they've got time. Uh, and that's it. Uh, so thanks. Any questions, find me later. Um, yeah, you can find me. I'm at emailj underscore. Uh, J at Action Rocket, and then yeah, the Action Rocket ones there. So yeah, that's it. Thanks.